All right, I'm gonna work on my painting bottleneck. This is a Coca-Cola bottleneck pouring into a glass. And it's a close-up, so get all these great colors that are just popping through and making it kind of modern. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna tell you the colors I'm using as I paint. Most of them are Daniel Smith. I will call it out if it's not a Daniel Smith color. But right now we're gonna dip into spring green. And this is right along the top of the bottle ridge. There's gonna be a nice crisp duck back black background back there. But right now we're coming up next to it. I have a little unevenness, but that'll be fixed. When we put the background in, we're going to switch out a bismuth vanity yellow, another Daniel Smith color. And you can see I'm dipping in my little well <clears throat> wells. I make my own pans. And I'm dipping in there. I have masking fluid, a few little dots up in here. We're going to add a little more bismuth vanity right in here. Not too much. It's a fairly opaque color, so it will kind of sit on top of things if you have it saturated when you're putting applying it. <clears throat> I'm going to add a little bit more while things are wet so they'll kind of move around for me, let that water do the work. We'll add a little more back in here just so we have some variation. All right, we're gonna come in here with some Quinn Gold. I already have this band kind of mapped out yet from yesterday, and I had just done that with a more transparent wash of the Quinn Gold. And so now I'm just going in, <clears throat> deepening up our value a little bit, adding some more saturation to the pigment. And there is masking right there. And while we have Quinn Gold on our brush, we may as well come down here and work on this band as well. Another little band of Quinn Gold that we're just gonna deepen the color. <clears throat> while we're here next to this Pyrrole Scarlet or Pyrrole Red, we're gonna go ahead and just soften that edge. Just did that with a little plain water <clears throat> as we pulled across. Just getting some more color in this band. I'm gonna make that pop out. These rich colors. I kinda like, I like doing a little contemporary edge to a still life. Coke bottles, you don't think of all these colors. But I saturated this Reference image. <clears throat> and I want, and I love all these colors that popped out. We're going to stick with Quinn Gold again. I like to go down and, and map out where I am. We may have to switch. We've got, we're going to do Quinn Gold first, but I'm, I'm kind of going and looking. All of our little masking points help figure out where we are. So I know I see this cluster of white dots. I see them in my reference image going to come up here. Always rely on your reference image while you're painting, even if you're following along. So I have a mask out swoosh here. I see that that's kind of that bismuth vanadate color that we're going to add in later. So I'm going to come in right behind it with the Quinn Gold. And I like to, in my drawing 
Sometimes I will shade in darker areas because it helps me figure out where I'm going in my painting. And also these masked out areas help me as well. Man, if I didn't mask, maybe I would get lost a lot more in my painting, but I don't know. <clears throat> but I definitely you'd love utilizing masking fluid for multiple reasons. <clears throat> Helping us figure out where we are in the painting by having those little registration points. I just kind of use my finger to push some paint that I'd gotten in the wrong spot. Let me go ahead and pull this up in here. And of course, the obvious one is it's going to preserve the white of our paper. Always important. I love that we have that ability and watercolor so that we can have that transparency and that kind of stained glass effect. I'm gonna pull up, there's some yellow in here, but I'm gonna go ahead and pull the Quinn Gold up and then we can add that bismuth vanadate on top because it does have a little opaqueness to it. It's an opaque color. So if we use it in a more saturated manner, as in not a lot of water, just getting a little bit of water and adding it to the party. I do not reconstitute my paints before I start. Um, I mean, I do have to add water from the brush, but I do not like use a spray bottle or anything like that. I'm adding that bismuth vanadate right on top to get some of that bright highlight right in there. What makes glass look real and sparkle is variety and values. This is almost a dry brushing technique right here. Do you see there's not a lot of water in that? I'm gonna rinse a little bit. So I wanna add a little bit of water, but I'm really almost using a dry brush right now and applying that bismuth vanadate kind of on top as a sparkle in there. I'm gonna get a little bit more. I don't want much water at all in this. Always pay attention to the ferrule of your brush. Sometimes there can be a water droplet that gets on there and it pops out at the worst time. So I like to take a paper towel and just kind of clean the back of my brush because if you get in a hurry and you get one of those drops that just fall down to your paper at the wrong time, it can add too much water. Once again, almost a dry brushing technique here. Not a lot of water, more pigment than water getting that nice highlight in there. And we can come up here and do the same thing. Now, if I were entering a show that was a transparent society, this would not be a good technique because <clears throat> this sits on the top of the paper a little bit. Most societies don't care, but if you Watercolor West, TWSA, that's the Transparent Watercolor Society, <clears throat> they want it transparent. They want no thicker paint. They want to be able to see the layers below. So just be aware. So in that instance, you could have done the bismuth vanadate first and then masked over it and done Quinn Gold after and then had those layers, you know, on top of each other like this. I'm just kind of adding this on top. And I'll never forget the first, I went, I went to a James Too Good workshop and he flat out was putting full body paint on top of, the, it was a Venice Venetian scene with the canals and he was doing like the reflections of the water. <clears throat> and I hadn't been painting very long at all. And I said, you can do that. <clears throat> you can do anything you want <clears throat> to get whatever desired effect you want. <clears throat> all right, we are going to get to work on the bottleneck. We're going to get our Quinn Gold. And we're going to get a thinner consistency. We're mapping out this shape, so we do that with that thinner consistency. 
And I think we're gonna go ahead and paint most of this area with the Quin Gold because we're gonna come in with the Bordeaux on top. So we're gonna get like a nice base right now for it. And then we'll come in with the Bordeaux when it dries. We could throw a little pyro orange down here. And we gotta be careful because the pyro orange is strong. I'm gonna throw it right where it meets this band. And there is masking along this ridge. And so we're gonna throw it right on that masking ridge, right in there. And that's just giving it a little bit of a gradation. So it's not so one note. All right, let's go back in with our spring green. No, I take that back. We're gonna stick with our pie roll for a minute. We're gonna come down here and we're gonna look at our rows. So we have our green row. We just did this one, which is gonna have Bordeaux and pyrrole scarlets in there. Then we've got this row. And then here is a row that's got, let's see, we're gonna do a little Quin Gold right here in the middle. So if I kind of measure things, here's where this ellipse, ellipse is a circle in perspective. This ellipse kind of that you're seeing that bottle, the rim, the bottleneck, the actual circle in perspective right there. Okay, so we come back over here. We've got a one little dot and highlight that, uh, masked out so we know where we are. We can follow down and make sure there's more where the other masking pieces are. So we know where that is. So the Quin Gold starts a little behind that. And then it's actually the center section of this red has like a Quin Gold middle. And that is what I'm filling in right now. We can add the red on top of the Quin Gold because they're both in the same family. It'll just add to it. So we don't have to worry about it making it a duller color or anything. It's actually gonna make it a brighter color. All right, and we'll come down here. This ridge we already do. We're gonna switch over to our Bismuth Vanity Yellow. And I have a pencil line drawn where this comes up. Here's this ridge, it's like a little wedge shape and it's masked out, but this comes all the way up to this masked out highlight right there. It's always good to orient yourself. Figure out from those masked out sections that we've done in our pencil drawing, all of those are our good indicators about where we're going. So important. That's why it's important to have that drawing the way we had it and to have our masking the way we have it so that we can figure all these things out. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pull up a little edge of that bismuth vanadate right in here, up here. We'll even pull a little in here. I see some brighter highlights on the back side of this little Quinn Gold section. All right. I guess I rinsed my brush too soon. We could come down here and go ahead and throw in our bismuth vanadate. There's a, it's actually a little orangier, but we'll start with, we're mapping this shape out in the lighter color. So that's our bismuth vanadate. We'll pull this in <clears throat> right here. And then we'll probably add a little pyro orange, maybe even a little quin gold into the mix right here. But we'll go ahead and map out a couple more shapes. We're gonna come over here. We're just gonna figure out where we have some more yellows. Okay. I see some coming down. I have a drip, some color that dripped here. So we're just gonna kind of scrub over that and move it out, move it on out. And it didn't happen. All right, and we're just gonna keep on coming over here and figuring out where we have a few 
let's see, here's this section. There's like a wedge right here. It's actually kind of red, but I'm just mapping that out with our lighter color. And pull this across. Okay, now we can go ahead and come back over here. I don't want to do the whole thing, I want to do the bottom because it gets a little pink up there. And remember how if we add that opera pink to the yellow, it oranges up. So we want it to be a little cooler pink up there. So I'm going to stop, <coughs> switch to my opera pink. We want a, a fairly thin saturation of this. More water, less pigment. We're mapping things out. It's a nice light pink in here. So that's what we want right now. So very thin wash. We can let those two meet right here in the middle and have it get a little orange in the middle. We just don't want the whole thing to be orange. And we'll go back in with a little more concentrated mix. So more pigment now. And we're going to pull that along the side here. <clears throat> Maybe up in here. A little pink highlight there. All right, so we're going to go back now. We may have to feed this wash a little bit because it may have dried a little. So I'm just gonna add some more water and some more pigment. Why not brighten it up while we're here? Don't waste a layer with just water. You won't get that nice saturation. Okay, so now we'll go into our pyro orange. We're gonna get a thin saturation of this. Thin right there. We're gonna pull that in here. It's gonna orange things up. right in here. I'm going to leave a little section of the brighter yellow. Yeah, a little too much pigment, so I wiped a little bit of it off. Come in here. So I'm leaving just a little shape right there. Come up here. We'll add a little more orange in. And then I'm going to switch over and add some Quinn Gold. Quinn Gold is rich. I'm going to get not a super thin saturation, kind of in between. We don't want a heavy saturation. We want somewhere in between. We're going to add a little just to richen up in here. If it gets too brown, then we can add more pyro orange back in. But I don't think so. I think it's okay. I just cleaned my brush. I have a thirsty brush. That's when your brush is clean. It has most of the water wiped out on the paper towel so it comes in like an eraser it's a thirsty brush it sucks it do you see how it just sucked that paint up so we're just sucking some of that paint up <clears throat> i'm just throwing drips of water everywhere okay so we're gonna go in with our pyro orange i'm gonna come over here I got a little more of a saturated amount. If you get a little more pigment in there, it kind of sits on top of the paper instead of spreading so much. The more water, the more it spreads. I'm gonna come in here with my pyro orange. Right in here. Pull it down. Okay. And I think I'm gonna take my pyro orange back here. And I'm doing, mapping this area in, doing a thinner wash of the pyro orange. There's one little yellow area. I don't have it masked, so we're gonna kind of paint around that yellow shape. And we'll add that in, in a minute. Uh, I'm 
I'm letting the two mingle a little, although it's a fairly hard edge, but we come back in with some darker values. And I'm gonna take this orange up here. There's a masked out section, some little like bubble looking areas. So we kind of orient ourselves over here is this shape. That came right off that bend right there. And then we come back here and we have a pink area and a blue area that I'm gonna go around. Cause remember <clears throat> the pink and the blue really need the white paper, especially not the orange. If we put blue on top of orange, that's the compliment. We, we, we talk about what happens when you add the complements together, you get a nice neutral. So we don't wanna gray that down or make it a neutral. We want it to pop out. Okay, I'm going in right here and just adding some little highlights of our pyro orange, kind of letting it sit on top of the paper. All right, where else can we do orange while we're here? Maybe right in here. I'm gonna rinse my brush a bit because I had a, quite a bit of pigment in there. This is a softer area. And go ahead and pull that down. It's gonna get Bordeaux in a minute. <clears throat> but Bordeaux is nice and dark. Should not be an issue. I'm gonna throw a little Quinn Gold on my brush. And pull that in here. Rinse it. And just clean up. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna go in. I take that back. I was gonna go start cleaning up, but I think I'm gonna fill in colors before I clean up because we'll do colors and then clean. Okay. I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna kind of work from the right to the left. I'm gonna add in a little Quinn Gold, kind of a light saturation of it right in there. Rinse my brush, just water. I'm kind of doing a unifying wash right there. Okay, then I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna get this very faint, 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 faint bit of pyro orange. And we're gonna come in here. We just worked on some of this. Clean that, put that pyro orange in. Okay, get a little more pyro orange in here. Too much rinse, okay. See, if I start in an area that has more of the orange, if I lay that color in an area that has more, if I have too much of my brush, like I just did, I can drop it in the area, run to the bucket, <clears throat> rinse my brush and just pull from that pile. Now, if I put that in a light area and I didn't need that all that orange there, we'd be in a little more trouble. So you always want to drop off when you come to the page that pigment somewhere that needs it. Somewhere that's already going to have a darker area of it. Okay, I'm gonna get in Pyro Scarlet. I'm gonna come up here. Sorry, Pyro Red. I'm gonna come up here and clean up. Okay, I added a little of the pyro red in there and now I'm just cleaning up edges. You know, we're doing this faster than I normally do a painting, even though I have to come to you in the afterplay. All right, bismuth vanadate, just to get some of these highlights back in. I watched a lot of people painting on the, I went and watched some of the presenters and I'm very impressed that they can get done, what they can get done an hour. I'm afraid that will never be my claim to fame, being able to get a painting done in an hour. Sad, but true. I do envy that skill. This is Bordeaux. And 
just glazing over what we already have. We can even go in up here. It's darker than what we have it. So let's get that highlight. So this is where you need to be slow and steady. If you have trouble with a steady hand, you can prop your little ping your finger out like that. See if I anchor myself with my little finger, it's like using a mall stick in oil painting. It helps me not have too much shaking in my hand. All right, I have masking there and that's actually dark. So we'll come back in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in some Bordeaux right here in the middle. And then we'll get a little pyro red. Okay, I'm going to switch to Pyro Red. A little more saturated wash of the Pyro Red. Kind of stipple. When you have areas that have a little texture and then you don't want them to just be in really hard lines, so I kind of, by stippling, just dot, do, 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 kind of do, 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 haphazard, dot around. That's what we're doing here. Let's come up here. Still pyro red. And I'm just gonna dot in down here so we get some of that texture. Okay. And we're gonna go back to Bordeaux. still damp so it's getting some nice blooms which is good and we're going to dip into our um, indigo sepia and we're going to drop a little of that in the center and we're just kind of stippling darting around kind of an organic shape we don't want it a big blob in the middle okay we're going to come over here this time we're going to start with our pyro red. Kind of went around a little white highlight. I think I have part of it masked. <clears throat> this is dry now, so we're okay right here. Okay, so here's our little, looks like a banana right now, but it's a little semicircle that's happening right there. So that helps gauge there's a dark highlight in there. We're gonna bring this. We actually can go ahead and do this whole shape because we want to have a little bit of a wet on wet when we drop in our darks. We're gonna go around our banana for the time being. We'll fix that in a minute and make it the right color. But at the moment, we're gonna go around our banana
Okay, we have some masking on this little ridge right here. I guess we could have done some yellow down here. I wasn't even paying attention. Okay. Okay, we're gonna dot in a little of the red in here. So there's a couple of spots that are highlights that we don't have and they're kind of fun little bubbles. I'm just going to kind of go around a couple of them. All right. <clears throat> Do a lighter saturation of that pyrrole red right up in here, all the way back to where we did some of this orange. I'm going to drop a little more red in. Okay, I'm going to switch to our Bordeaux. While well, things are a little wet. Go around our banana again. I could do this whole thing because it's going to get darker in there, but it's part of that mapping the shape out thing that I want to know where I'm putting it. So if I deliberately go around it, and then we're just going to do a little, I'm going to kind of leave some red in there. So I'm just kind of dashing around here and then we can always go in and add a little high little red back on top. Alrighty. That pyro red mixed with a little of the Bordeaux, so I'm kind of using that to my advantage right now. Let's get a little more Bordeaux. Just deepen this up a little while it's wet. We're going to leave a little glint of that red in there because it's pretty, but we'll deepen that up. <coughs> Oops, I went over some of those whites that I had saved. We have a couple left. It happens. It happens. I really wanted them. I should have masked them out. All right, we're going to go into our Quinn. Nope. We're going to go into our Indigo Sepia mixture. I'm going to say this. I'm teaching a long workshop right now, and I keep calling everything a Quinn color. All right, so I'm dropping in that indigo and sepia. I'll drop a little in here. There's some dots of it here and there. Okay, and then whatever we have left over, we can just glaze over some of this up here if we need to darken any of it. Okay. 
what's happening back here? <clears throat> All right, let's go in with Quinn. Nope. See, everything's a Quinn. Let's go in with Pyro Red. Let's map out this shape back here on this rim. Okay, things are wet. We gotta be careful. I'm gonna plant my thing, my little finger, so I can try to have a steady hand. I have masking up here. That's why I'm not being as careful. Up there. All right, and then we're gonna go in with Bordeaux. a nice white kind of highlight on there. We want to leave that. Okay. All right, let's go in with Bismuth Vanity Yellow down here in this yellow area. Now, we have a lot of red. Some of it may be wet. If it is, leave yourself a little white edge about an eighth of an inch away from where we have color. Leave that little edge. We can pull up into it in a minute when it's dry. Oh, there's a cute little pink highlight over here. So, we're going to leave this little pink, this white, because if we put pink on that, it's going to make it orange. So, we are going to go in our pyro orange right now, a faint bit of it. We are going to orange up some of this. I might have too much. Let's rinse our brush. Turn my bucket around. I have a chambered bucket, and I like it because then I have multiple areas so I can have my dark well I can have clean water you know so I can keep the lighter areas with cleaner water so I really like that chambered bucket all right so this was a very thin wash so it should be pretty almost dry by now so we're gonna get a very faint wash of the pink and throw it in here because it's real really faint Maybe a little bit more. We want them to know it's pink. Okay. And then while we're in the opera pink, we'll go ahead and just pop this. This is hot right here. We're going to pop that with a really hot pink. Alrighty. Okay, we're gonna come back here. We're gonna start with our pyrrol red because we're gonna be mapping shapes again in a lighter color. So you want a lighter, <clears throat> thinner saturation. I just pull up on the side of my paint there, my little container. All right, let me get my bearings. There's my banana. We'll go ahead and tone him down. That's with the pyro red. I'm just toning him down a little bit. Um, then we're going to come over here. Okay, I'm do pyro red again. This was a trickier spot, so the trickier the spot, the lighter I map things in. Then I can 
go in and start darkening when I have a better bearing on where I am. And then we'll get into our Porto. And remember how I said drop it the sad drop your pigment where you know it's dark well it's dark in the middle and we want a little lighter around the edge so I just kind of dropped it in the middle because I knew it can handle it there I'm going to rinse my brush now and pull from what I have Bordeaux strong <clears throat> it's a strong color kind of bullies those other colors we have some nice and dainty colors and we have bully colors that kind of come in and take over so once this dries i'm going to soften some of this let's see we can go with our quin gold right now over here let me go ahead and just kind of soften some of that with my quin gold right there some of those edges I'll even come in here a little bit now I'm very organically do, 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 letting my paintbrush dance around dance around so that it's just organically putting color here and there because we want that orange we want some of that yellow popping through but we also want to tone things down a bit I'm gonna do it again a little stronger concentration and let's dance Put on my dancing shoes. All right. Dance, dance, dance. And then I may even switch over and do a little pyro red. Dance, dance, dance. That pyro red's not quite so bright when it hits that Quinn gold. Not, and we don't want it like super boop. We want it to be little bubbles and texture. <clears throat> this is either the ice or the texture of the glass you know how some of those glasses have like the little ridges on the side I don't remember doesn't really matter okay back to our pyro red and masking all right we want medium sa uh, saturation right now this is a darker area so we can do our mapping in with a with a, a little more boldly we want to go around some of these yellows in here. Okay, I'm just kind of dancing around again in here, leaving some spots that I can put some yellow back in. Got a little more saturated red on here now. Coming in. Okay, now we're going to go in with a little of the bismuth vanadate to fill in some of these little holes that we have. Now, we have to remember bismuth vanadate has a little bit of, it's opaque, so it's going to do a little more coverage than we might want, or it might blend beautifully. I'm not minding it so far. Rinsing my brush. Pull from what I got. Alright, we're going to go back in with a little pyro red. 
I'm gonna come in here and just take back a few of these shapes that the yellow covered. This pyro red has got a lot of coverage too. So it comes in and does a nice job. Okay, and then pie um, board up. Dropped it in the middle because it's still a little damp. These are not hard lit edges and we're gonna let the water, this dampness that we have right now, do some of the work for us. That's what we like about watercolor. The water does a lot of work for us. Gotta utilize it. Okay. All right, we're gonna go in, I'm gonna get a clean brush and I'm just gonna soften an edge. Like I don't think that should, I'm just gonna pull that down, round it out a little, okay. All right, we're gonna come over here, work on this section, pyro red again to do our mapping. Map those shapes, then get our value right. So we're gonna start over here. We have masking on the very back edge. And I'm gonna kind of pull here and there and leave a little or hint of orange back there because I like it. Just use my finger. I cleaned my brush so I didn't have much on there. All right, remember this white space that we went around. So be aware of it if you did that. I'm gonna go around a couple of these little orange spaces because we're gonna add some yellow back in. Okay, we're gonna hit this line hard. Okay, now let's go with our bismuth vanadate. Okay, go in, dry, kind of almost dry brushing here, not much water at all, because I want this to kind of stay where I put it. I don't really want it to move around a whole lot. Okay, and we can do this guy. He's yellow. Okay, now we'll go with our Bordeaux. I'm sure, it's still recording. The other day my camera quit recording on me. Just on its own. All right, this is Bordeaux, I need a little more water. I want it pretty saturated. I don't want it to move around a lot because there's some dark spots right in here that I'm mapping in first. Okay, Rinse. Now we want a lighter saturation. Come over here. I'm gonna start at the top. We're gonna work our way down. We're gonna dodge around some of the yellows. 
Got a little more saturation on my brush. We want these yellows in here, but we don't want them super thick. So I did just kind of tone down, like we might tone down that guy a little bit. We want that yellow highlight, but like I said, not quite so thick. All right, and I'm just gonna throw a little. Okay. And then I'm gonna get a little Quinn Gold. There's a little kind of texture line right here. A little texture dot right here. A little texture line. Oop. Oh my goodness. All right. <clears throat> Let's see what we're missing here. Alrighty, so we're going to go up in this section and we're going to start with Bordeaux. We're going to get a medium saturation. We're going to go ahead and go right along this bottle. Even though it's dark in here, we're going to add the indigo sepia and the in a minute. There's masking along that fridge. All right, I threw that in, but I want to liven it up, so we're gonna go in with our pyrrole red on top. These glaze nicely together. I always like to glaze um, reds if I want a cherry red, I'll glaze a red with an orange. Um, I'm noticing if I want like the kind of burgundy-ish red, more red to it, you can glaze this Bordeaux, and it's really, really pretty. So I'm gonna keep that in my back pocket. Getting some of my indigo sepia for the anytime I need that color, because that is a really pretty combo. And that's the pyrrole red and the Bordeaux. All right, so we're gonna come up right in here. This is my indigo sepia. I'm gonna go along. I'm gonna leave a little shape of the red in there. Dash a little in here, dot a little in there. And I, and this kind of comes down and up. And get a little of the pyrrole red. Some of these bloomed a little much, so I'm just gonna kind of push them back. Push and pull, push and pull. Okay, can I see the bottom? done it. I guess we didn't really need the bottom right now. All right, pyrrole red over here. It's a little redder over here, so I'm going to start with the pyrrole red. Although you could do the same thing we just did over there, but I feel like it's redder on this side and it gets more purple on the inside. So that was my rationale for why I did it that way. I'm 
And then there's a little red in here. Yeah. Got a little Bordeaux. I'm gonna stop it because um, it's gonna keep blooming. We can kind of try to control it now because we don't want it to go all the way into that orange. I'm gonna come in on this side. Like, oh, did I just go over my blue and pink? Oh, you guys, why did you let me do that? Let's see if we can throw a little of our pink in right now and salvage it. We may not get our blue, but we'll try our pink. Okay, I'm gonna throw that in and we'll see. I'm just gonna do a little here. Why not? It's more red, but why not? Hmm, I'm gonna switch to Bordeaux back here. there yet okay a little more Bordeaux we're just gonna pull up along the rim Maybe some cleaning when we take that off all right we're gonna do a Bordeaux back we're gonna start with Bordeaux back in here then are washed because we're mapping but it's pretty dark Okay, it's kind of working nicely over this. this. I think this was Quinn Gold that we had back here. So we're gonna go with a little spring green back here. This is gonna gray things up, but it's a little, I wanna get a little more opaque mixture of it back here. It is a little grayed down and I might've gotten too much. So let's, Add a little bismuth vanadate to the party here. All right, let's jump over to some pyro red. Thinner. A thinner, well, kind of a medium saturation. We're gonna come in, eh, it's pretty thin. Just gonna get a little more. That time I got a little more like a medium. Your finger does it's a nice eraser. Okay, and we're gonna come in here and go do, 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 do. it gets dark in this section. We could have mapped it out, but it'll just add to the color. We're gonna leave that a little bit of yellow in the center.
Okay, we're gonna go back in now with some Quin Gold. Throw a little Quin Gold up here. And then I clean my brush and I'm just going to soften where they meet. All right, let's get a little Bordeaux. Too much Bordeaux, so I wipe some off. Might be still too strong. Let's see, we may have to go on top with a little pyro. Rinse and clean, although it's doing kind of a nice texture. That like little dry brushing texture is kind of what's going on over there. Happy accident. Mm, I'll just do that a couple more times. Okay. Need to get more water. We have this big merit area mask down here. Clean up, clean up on aisle 12. All right. Let's get a little more of our pyro red. I had to go look for those two little dots back here to figure out where this dark highlight kind of went in. And then I gotta come up here. So in between this one, I might have this in the wrong spot, but that is where that is. And so that means there's gold in here. <laughs> That's still the indigo sepia. I'm just kind of trying to figure out this shape here. All right, let's go on with a little Bordeaux. A little Bordeaux over here. Oh, we're gonna go with a 
little pyro red. Okay, we're going to go with a little Quinn Gold in the middle. Go a little Quinn Gold up here. And if you want to pop up an even brighter highlight, you can get a little bismuth vanadate and drop it right in the center of those sections, and it'll pop an even brighter highlight in there. Okay, I'm gonna get a little spring green. Oops, I lost my picture. Okay. All right, I need some pyro orange. Just clean water now, just kind of pulling. Lost my picture a bit. Pulling from all those colors. We'll get a little Bordeaux. Okay, I'll go a little indigo sepia. Some nice little speckly bits. We're kind of doo -doo 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 -doo. dancing around again. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Red mm, Bordeaux. I changed my mind. I'm gonna come in here with Bordeaux. I'm going to switch to Pyro Red. Rinse. We want some of that orange to sneak through. Where am I? What am I doing? Figure out where I am. Okay. Before I go too far. Okay, a little pyro or Bordeaux. Alright, and my 
hand in something and I don't want to spread it everywhere. All right, I'm painting faster than normal and I know it's still taking a long time, but I normally spend a lot of time tweaking every little thing perfectly. So I'm kind of painting in hyper speed, but I want you to get the idea. And then if you spend even more time, you can refine every bit of this. And I love that process. I love to lose myself in a painting. This is indigo sepia. I love to throw on, I watch stuff or listen to podcasts. I can't do music when I paint. So I like to throw on a show or a movie or a podcast and get lost in my paintings. All right, this is still the indigo CBO. There was a darker section over here. Goes almost all the way to there. Okay, wait, where was it here? No, there. Some more highlights back here, okay. Be easy to get lost. Alright, and then I'm going to get some Quinn Gold and just do some, leave some of that little green. Oops, I had too much Bordeaux still. Either that or I dipped into the Bordeaux, I don't know. A little Quinn Gold just to clean up in here, tone down some of this, leave still some highlights here and there. Rinse, clean. Okay. Chiral red. Yeah, I'm just kind of stippling around right in this section is what I'm talking about. And we're going to just kind of stipple some of this red and we don't want it too hard edged. Just clean water, and I'm just cleaning up, blending. Okay, a little Bordeaux. Quinn Gold. We don't want this to wipe a little bit off. We don't want this to. It's yellow, but it's got to have some stuff going on. So that it doesn't look like a bright yellow patch. We got a little bismuth vanity, and we're going to throw a little yellow in here so that's not just a big gold patch. What's happening here? A little pyro orange. And a little more water. Thin little bit. I'm just kind of doing a unifying wash here. Okay. Let's go up. Get a little bismuth vanadate in here. Just getting some shapes in here. Now we're going to switch over and do that with Quinn Gold in this section. 
just kind of dappling, getting some shapes, breaking some things up. Ooh, really in here because I got left white. And it probably shouldn't be. Okay. There's a nice blue pop. We're going to do our horizon blue. That's on our list, yeah. Horizon blue. It is an opaque color as well. So we're going to get a pretty nice, thick saturation. And we're going to pop that blue. There's some masking here, so it's not going to be a big, huge line of it. We're going to pop that blue in there. Make sure that blue's in here. That blue is in here. So when you put a color in, since we lost our nice place for our ultramarine, we'll throw some of the horizon in. And there's some up here. So when you introduce the color, it should be in at least three places and it should kind of bounce around the painting. We do have it for sure in three places. Let's make sure our pink is in enough places. We're gonna go through, I'm gonna add a little spring green. I'm gonna get a little more saturated amount. There's spring green down here. So I'm gonna kind of dry brush that in there. Rinse and just kind of pull from what I got. Okay, just wanted to get a hint of that green in there. And there's also a hint of the green down here. That goes up. Okay. Alright. And I'm going to go in here with a little Quinn Gold. Right here. A little unifying wash. We did just put that Horizon blue in there, so we want to pay attention not to go over that. All right, just do a little check here. And get a little pyro orange and just kind of do a unifying wash over here. With, oop, I've got a little. I just took a clean brush and pulled some of that out. All right, this is going to be dark in a second because we got to check that. Let's check our pinks now. A little um, opera. We're going to go around and make sure we have opera in enough places. There's going to be some on these stripes here, too. Okay. All right, while the glass and the bottle dry, we'll go in and do the background. We're going to do a combination of a big brush and a little brush, and maybe that cosmetic brush like we should, talked about. This is a one inch that I'm going to... Get, this is my indigo sepia. I have a big pile of it. And sometimes I drag other colors from paintings, like there's a little, probably alizarin crimson or something. There's some yellow in there, gold. So it's okay to pull colors. It just makes the dark even livelier. We're gonna get a nice bit, and I may have to do this with my I'm not as good. Ah, maybe it's going to work. Let's see. Okay. Better. More control with my little brush. So I'm going to... I almost dropped that whole black brush of paint right on top of the painting. Wouldn't that be fun? Okay. We're going to go in. Clean up. And I probably... Oh, there's masking there. That's what I was running into. that again. Get a bunch. Get it nice and saturated. So let's try. It's really good if you have bigger brushes in the background. 
I fought that for a long time, but I love having a nice flat background. And you really need less brush strokes, more coverage. And see if you had a bigger painting, you could use an even bigger brush. I was going to show you some of mine. I'm not seeing them at the moment. Okay. So I want you to notice on here, I'm kind of doing a cross hatching like a grid. So I went horizontal and now I'm going vertical. We're going to let that sit in there for a minute and then we'll come back and we'll get rid of, we'll add more color and we'll get rid of any brush strokes we don't like. Okay, I'm going to stop and get my little brush. I'm mostly dry. Okay, that's a good outline, then we can go back in with our flat and pull. All right, we're gonna go up here. We're gonna get a little more color. Oops, see, I lost my nice, my nice pretty bit there. So we're gonna go in with our round brush. Got to keep that rounded. All right, and then we're going to make sure our darks in here are matching that background color. So go in and saturate any dark areas that aren't quite where they need to be. And I'm going to take a break for a second, let all this dry, and then we'll meet back and take masking off and check on our background. We can... If you have your cosmetic brush, if you have one, you can very lightly do one of these numbers to get rid of any, like this has quite a bit of, I'm going to wipe it on paper towel, but you can do, I barely touch the paper and I do circular motions. And I can even pull out, Ooh, where are they? Around the edges, you can even get, so this is a lost edge. So I'm going to pull this actually into here because that's that lost edge. We want that black to come in and be seamless. So we'll pull that in. Over here, if you have any extra that you want to get rid of, you can pull up with the little eyebrow brush from that cosmetic set. You can do this with flat brushes, probably a mop brush, but these are so nice and fluffy. I got a little on there. This set is Eco Tools um, from Amazon, E-C-O-T-O. 
H-O-L-F. But I'm sure Target, Walmart, I just don't have Target and Walmart in Japan. Well, but not true. They have Walmart owned Seiyu. That's the Japanese Walmart. They actually have Walmart, but it's called Seiyu. But different stuff. I'm just adding a little of the business vanity where a little of the black kind of came up. Okay, and then what else? All right. I'll let that dry. I'll be back when it's dry. All right, everything is dry. And I have pulled all the masking off with my rubber cement pickup. Always use a rubber cement pickup. My background, I didn't really have to do too much to it because once I did that brush, you know, when I left you guys where I had it, pretty much was good. I cleaned up a little edge um, around my glass. So now we're just gonna go and touch up a few little things here and there. It really won't take that long to clean up. Um, I'm just actually gonna use a wet brush, clean brush, and we're gonna pull from the paint around it. Just gonna tone things, a lot of things are bright white, but we're just gonna tone things a little down just a little bit in some places. Um, some places I'm gonna get a little orange and put it over that one. So some places we have to actually add a little color. Other places we'll just pull from the pigment like that one, I just pulled from the pigment around it. This is dark, so we do need to go in. I'm gonna go in with um, pyrrole red and then a little scarlet, or I'm sorry, a little Bordeaux. So this one I am gonna go in and paint this line. I might have that in the wrong place, let's see. This line goes down. And then there's, hold on, let's see. Here's this, here's. Okay, there's kind of a shape over here that we didn't get in there. So I'm just gonna kind of draw it in. That's what was throwing me. I'm gonna go with the Bordeaux now. Just adding a little bit and a little Bordeaux here. It's just kind of an interesting shape happening here. So we're just gonna kind of ad lib. How's that? All right. I do wanna make sure this is straight. Those are things, things need to be straight. All right, there's not really a big white dot there. There's not really that here. So I'm just Toning, if a shape's really big, I might just tone, um, do one side of it. And then I'm gonna take my brush and just kind of <laughs> make a mess. Look, I meant to do that. So I just got some clean water. We're cleaning up the edge. And then I just make sure your paper towel, and I've done this more than once, where I had, I mean, quick, I'm trying to do something fast, but I want it to dry, and I grab a paper towel, and it's dirty. And then I end up putting black or something on there that doesn't need to be in a really light space. So always get a clean little piece of paper towel. Okay, this. Up. I'm just using water. I haven't even gone to the bucket right now. I'm just kind of, it's still wet. So I'm just kind of pulling. Okay, here I'm gonna get a little bismuth vanity and just a little more. Just kind of needs to be straight though. Okay. 
All right, let's see. I'm gonna go in here. I have this bright white line right here and I'm gonna add opera. I think it is actually our opera highlight that's supposed to be there. Alrighty, a lot of this is pretty white. We're gonna take a little pyro orange and tone the back of our banana out. <laughs> it's just kind of a little water, dodge here and there. Pull from color around. We'll just kind of make these a little smaller. All right, I kind of got maroon in an area. Let's see. I think what it is is I need more. Okay. Okay, yeah, I think that's what needed to be done. Just, that was Bordeaux. Just cleaning up. All right, now let's go look at the bottle. The bottle has a lot of highlights in it, so we may just tone a few down here and there. I'm gonna take a little bismuth vanadate and kind of run it. There. Okay. I lost some of the cute little highlights. I'm gonna put a little, few little dots back in. Unfortunately, I lost some of them. So I just added a little bismuth vanadate to my brush and it's pretty opaque. So I can get some of those dots in there. Okay, this has a dark spot, so my little indigo sepia. There's a dark little area in here. I've been waiting to put this in. Okay. Rinse my brush really well. And I'm just going to tone things down just a little here and there. Well, some of this is pretty white. I have some maroon or Bordeaux on my brush. I'm ditch a little of that. Okay, back here we're gonna tone a little of that, but not too much. Remember, see, I had dark on there and I almost made a mess. Pay attention to your paper towel. A little pyro orange. Throw that in there. And I kind of made that line go too. Okay. So I don't have to do a whole lot. I'm going to take a little Holbein Bright Vi um, Horizon Blue. Right in here. Just kind of. I'm kind of dabbling to organic go around I don't want to I want to leave a few little white highlights Can we go a little bismuth vanity? Oh, that's a little white highlight I really wanted. Oh, good. I pulled most of it back out. Love lifting with the paper towel. And just with water cleaning up this edge. A 
little spring green. I'm gonna come in here. A little darker green it's got a little line <coughs> excuse me We're going with a little bismuth vanity. I think we're just about wrapping it up. A little bismuth vanity right here because I forgot this little swoosh. Uh, I can kind of brighten this up in here. All right, I think that's just about. That was just water I pulled from the color around it to smooth things out. All right. So you can keep smoothing anywhere you see it, but I'm fairly happy here. Let me get a little bright. Horizon blue, sorry. Sometimes if I wanna shrink a spot, I'll get a nice bright color like that blue with the green, something pretty like that. Okay. Thank you guys for joining me and I hope you I saw a lot of you had already painted some of this. You've done a great job with what we demoed that day and you'd added on. So there's the finishing touches so you can see the rest of it. Thank you guys. Hope to paint with you again. Bye.